to discuss the very important characteristic of a flip-flop called minimum pulse width requirement. In fact, this is a crux of our video. Now in these days, almost all the static timing analysis tools give us a slack for this minimum pulse width requirement. If slack is negative for this minimum pulse width requirement, then our design will not work. It should always be positive. So now let us see what is this minimum pulse width requirement. We always define a flip flop that if it is a positive edge trigger flip flop, then D should be passed to Q at the positive edge of the clock. And similarly, we define its behavior for the negative edge. And we always say that in the static timing analysis, we should fulfill the setup and hold requirement of a flip flop. But we never talk about the duty cycle of a clock. And this minimum pulse width requirement characteristic is associated with the duty cycle only. Let me define duty cycle for you. For example, this signal has 50% duty cycle. That means the logic high remains 50% of the total time period of the clock signal. Similarly, 75% duty cycle means the logic high remains 75% of the total time period of the clock signal. And this 25% duty cycle means the logic high remains 25% of the time of the total time period of the clock signal. Friends, now very important thing. This flip-flop cannot work on a clock with any duty cycle. Because this flip-flop demands that inside the clock signal, this logic high should remain for some minimum time. Similarly, this logic zero should remain for some minimum time. Then only this flip-flop will work properly. Otherwise, it can go to a metastable state. Now, in the subsequent part of the video, we are going to discuss why a flip-flop requires this logic I for some minimum time and this logic zero for some minimum time. This is a simple D flip-flop having clock and D input as two inputs. And as we know, this D input should be stable for some minimum time before this clock edge and it is called setup time. So this only forms the basis of minimum logic zero width requirement. So minimum logic zero should be equal to the T setup time of a flip-flop. Now we also know that this D input should be stable for some minimum time after the clock edge and it is called hold time. And there is another parameter called propagation time which is defined as a minimum time this D take to reach Q after this positive edge of the clock. And usually this propagation time is greater than the hold time, but maybe in some architectures, um, hold time can be greater than the T propagation time. If T propagation time is greater than the T hold time, then it forms a basis of minimum logic high width requirement. So minimum logic high width will be equal to T propagation time if it is greater than the hold time. If hold time is greater than the propagation time, then minimum logic high width requirement will be equal to T hold time of the flip-flop. Friends, I have written minimum logic high width requirement and minimum logic low width requirement for a positive edge triggered flip-flop in a summarized way. Minimum logic high width requirement will be equal to propagation delay of a flip-flop if propagation time is greater than hold time. And minimum logic high width requirement will be equal to hold time of a flip-flop if hold time is greater than the propagation delay. We already discussed. Now at last, minimum logic low width requirement will be equal to setup time of a flip-flop. And similarly, we can see the minimum logic high and low width requirement for negative edge trigger flip-flop. Now for a negative edge trigger flip-flop, minimum logic low width requirement will be equal to the propagation delay of a flip-flop if propagation delay is greater than the hold time. Minimum logic low width requirement will be equal to the hold time of a flip-flop if hold time is greater than the propagation delay. Now at last, minimum logic high width requirement for an active edge ticket flip-flop will be equal to setup time of a flip-flop. Now let us see the practical example of minimum pulse width requirement. I have taken this example. In this example, minimum pulse width requirement of a flip-flop is 500 picosecond. Assume high and low width requirement, both are 500 picosecond. Then, 
with 50% duty cycle clock we can use a clock of operational frequency 1 gigahertz let us see how because duty cycle is 50% and t on it can be minimum 500 picosecond because the width requirement is 500 picosecond as the duty cycle is 50% so t of will be equal to t on it will be also 500 picosecond now the time period will be equal to t on plus t off that will be 1000 picosecond and frequency will be inverted of time period which will become 1 gigahertz now let us take another example in this example minimum pulse width requirement of a flip flop is 500 picosecond only but the duty cycle of a clock is 20 percent in this case we can use a clock of maximum 400 megahertz let us see how because the duty cycle is 20 percent now t on will be less than t off and minimum t on will be 500 picosecond because the width requirement is 500 picosecond now t off t off will be four times the t on which will become 2000 picosecond and time period will become t on plus t off which will be 500 plus 2000 it will become 2500 picosecond now frequency will be 1 divided by time period which will become 400 megahertz now you see these width requirements and duty cycle together define the maximum operational frequency of our design friends with this i'm going to close this video thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell to stay updated on our latest content your support means a lot to us